This is ABC 15 Mornings. Phoenix police shooting. This is a seventh Phoenix police officer shot and 12th injured in the past three months. New details in a case where investigators think police were ambushed. More attacks hitting Ukraine. Chaos. Those bombs coming from like left and right. You're just praying to God it doesn't land near you. And Russia now asking China for help. Dealing with inflation impacts you. And if you give me just 90 seconds, I'll tell you why. Why raising interest rates will affect all of us. Returning to the NFL. He's a huge piece of American culture. And that's why this story resonates the way it does. Tom Brady says he's not quite ready to retire. <laughs> Unfinished business, I guess, right? He's still got something left to prove for sure. Hey, good Monday morning, everyone. I'm Allison Rodriguez in for Kaylee O'Kelly today. And I'm Nick Saletti. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, nice, beautiful weather this weekend. Let's check in with meteorologist Iris and Rocio with a quick check of our most accurate forecast, hoping to keep that nice weather streak going, Iris. You know what? If you like the warmer weather, then certainly you're going to like this week as temperatures are just going to continue to trend up over the next few days. We reached 80 yesterday. Today, add a couple more degrees to it as we tap out at 82 this afternoon, and that means the warm up will be a little quicker than yesterday. This morning, maybe a sweater as you step outside, but you probably won't need that heavier coat as I don't think it's that cold, but again, you know, you do you. Temperatures in the 40s to 50s here as we start the day. We'll be in the mid 50s by 8 o'clock this morning. Then we warm into the 60s really quickly after that upper 60s by 10 a.m. with mid 70s by lunchtime. So even if you have a heavier coat, you're likely going to be shedding those layers pretty quickly. We'll top out then at 82 degrees by 4 p.m. We spend a few hours in the 80s before we cool back down into the 70s just before that sun sets. So today a little warmer than yesterday and then that temperature climbs even more as high pressure builds in. We're going to inch closer to those 90s a few days this week. I'm going to take you through those changes. Plus when we'll see our next cold front that It'll cool us back off and maybe bring some rain chances in that full seven day forecast. Our Nohalani graph though is in this morning for Megan Thompson, giving us an update on our Monday morning drive. And we're all hoping that it's kind of a smooth easing us into the work week. Kind you of know, day. you certainly hope so on a Monday. It's not bad, but we do have a couple of traffic snarls to tell you about at this hour. So here we go, taking a look at those valley maps and you can see we've got a couple of new colors out there. The I 10 starting to see more of that typical slowdown right as you start to hit 60. 7th Avenue and then the closer that you get to the downtown area. We also do have an obstruction this morning on the I-10 eastbound. The exit ramp is blocked right now at the I-17. So uh, it's not causing any slowdown just yet, but I expect that it probably will start to do that in the next couple of minutes here. On the 17, we've got a stalled vehicle in the northbound lanes right near Greenway Road. So just make sure that you give them some extra room further north of there. The 17 southbound entry ramp. There is a crash at the loop 101. Also not causing a backup just yet. Hopefully they can move it off to the side quickly, but just your heads up there. Rest of the East Valley looks great this morning. All of the 202s plus the US 60 are moving along just fine, but I will give you those desert drive times in just a little bit. Let's get to our top stories this morning. Two Phoenix police officers are recovering right now after getting shot at early Sunday. So this happened near 27th Avenue in Maryland and Amelia Fabiano following this case for us. Amelia, police just telling you right now that they've taken two people into custody in connection to this. Allison, so we know the shooter is in custody this morning. They have not released that person's identity, but we do know they're facing attempted homicide charges from those shots they fired at those two officers. The other person is a man who we're not sure if he's connected to the shooting itself, but we do know he was someone police were initially trying to pull over right before that shooting happened. So here's the mug shot we have of him this morning. Take a look at your screen. This is 18 year old Javon Beasley. He's now in the Maricopa County Jail facing a felony flight charge. So officials say this all started at about one Sunday morning when two officers tried to stop his vehicle for a traffic violation. He didn't stop and the officers ended up losing sight of his car shortly after they did relocate it tried to stop it again when someone standing along the side of the road started shooting at their vehicle. That person then ran away and other officers spent hours trying to look for them at Casa Marabella condominiums. Neighbors there told our crew they heard those gunshots that suspect fired. Just grabbed my son who was next to me and we literally like 
dipped off the bed and just rolled onto the floor because I didn't know what to happen. And what if a bully went through our windows, into our doors? That's, it makes me want to just break my lease and move. <laughs> it really does. I don't feel safe. It's getting bad. Yeah, that's something very scary to hear for sure inside your own home. Luckily, we do know those two officers who were hurt are OK. The passenger officer was shot in the wrist. The driver officer was hit by some shattered glass. Both of them are OK. As far as that shooting suspect, we're working to confirm their identity this morning. Our newsroom has reached out to Phoenix PD. So as soon as we get that update confirmed, Nick, of course, will pass it along. Yeah, of course, we're just so glad because we know this could have ended so much worse. Amelia Fabiano yeah. live for us, bringing us the latest details on that. In the meantime, leaders from Russia and Ukraine holding a new round of peace talks this morning as Russia continues to increase its aggression, attacking a military base just 10 miles from Poland. The site is along a route used to supply Ukraine with military aid from Western countries. 35 people were killed, more than 100 wounded. The White House says if a ceasefire is not reached soon, as many as 10 million people could flee Ukraine, which is about a fifth of that country's population. The invasion of Ukraine keeping the pain at the pump high, the national average hitting $4.33. That's 25 cents higher than last week. In Arizona, we are paying about $4.60 a gallon, which is up about 50 cents from last week. Now this week, the Federal Reserve is meeting to discuss raising interest interest rates for the first time in years, with leaders believing raising rates will help with inflation. But how does a rate hike really impact you day to day? Here's our Joe St. George to explain. I already know what you're thinking. Another person on TV talking about interest rates. I get it. It's boring, but it impacts you. And if you give me just 90 seconds, I'll tell you why. With the clock ticking, let's start with the big meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday. That's when the Federal Reserve will discuss and likely decide on raising interest rates. The Federal Reserve is the government agency that sets rates for the country. When an increase happens, buying a house, getting a loan, your credit card balance and even your savings account are impacted. Let's start with your credit card. The average credit card debt in the U.S. is around $5,500. The average interest rate is 16%. If interest rates are raised by around 1%, percent as is predicted your monthly minimum payments will go up a few bucks and if that's all you pay the debt will be three to four hundred dollars more in the end how about a car loan a monthly payment on a twenty five thousand dollar loan would only cost about five to fifteen dollars more how about a house a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage would be around two hundred dollars more each month and seventy thousand dollars more over the course of 30 years that may impact someone's decision to buy and it could cool off a red hot housing market. There are some benefits to a higher interest rate. You will earn more from your savings account now, not to mention the reason the Federal Reserve is doing this is so inflation comes down. The thinking is that if things cost a bit more to borrow, people won't buy as much, forcing prices to stabilize. How'd I do on time? Okay, not bad. It really is important though. We'll let you know what the Federal Reserve decides later this week. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. It's 607. Big news involving COVID-19 research for parents. Pfizer says it hopes to have a treatment available for kids before they head back to school this fall. Now, this would be a version of its antiviral pill, Paxlovid. Right now, it's only approved for kids 12 and older. And Pfizer also giving us an update on when kids under five will be able to get vaccinated. The CEO says this could come as soon as May. Pfizer is expected to seek authorization next month for a three-shot regimen, which doses one-tenth as strong as shots for people 12 and older, the adult sizes. After weeks of delay, spring training is officially going to take over the Valley later this week. Feels good to talk about baseball right now. And today, the Chicago Cubs want to celebrate the return of baseball. The team inviting fans to Sloan Park in Mesa. You can enjoy ballpark hot dogs and some soft drinks. Say they put soft drinks. They don't want me to say pop, but that's probably what you're going to hear in there. Uh, you'll get a 25% discount on all merchandise too. And by the way, the Cubs and Mesa Hohokums, they'll also be hosting a raffle to benefit Ukrainian relief efforts. So you'd have a little fun and give back too. And you know, we can't forget our Arizona Diamondbacks full squad. They're going to be back on the field practicing today. The D-backs taking on the Rockies Thursday. Spring training tickets go on sale tomorrow at noon. 
And hey, we're not forgetting our Phoenix Suns either, celebrating a huge win this morning. The team easily defeating the LA Lakers at home Sunday, scoring a season high 140 points. The Lakers almost 30 points behind that at 111. Tomorrow, the Suns will be in New Orleans facing off against the Pelicans. And here's your fun statistic for the morning. The Suns have beaten every NBA team at least once a season. It's the first time that's happened since the 2006-2007 season. On fire. Feeling good. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. A new survey finds a lot of people who quit their job during the pandemic are now dealing with a little buyer's remorse. Plus, calling an audible this morning. Tom Brady decides retirement not exactly for him, so he's coming back for another season. Taking it old school, not everything has to be streamed. It's 2022 and CDs are making a comeback. Our live drive is up and out of this morning. This is the 202 right near Gilbert. Several other drivers on the road, but otherwise they're cruising along on this Monday morning. I'll get a look at those desert drive times because we are seeing some slowing in the West Valley. That's still ahead. It's 6:13. Let's get your morning headlines today. Officials from the Biden administration will meet with leaders from China to discuss reports that Russia asked China for military and economic assistance. The meeting will happen in Rome. The White House says there will be consequences if China helps Russia minimize the fallout from global sanctions for its deadly invasion in Ukraine. More lawmakers across the country are looking at putting in new rent control rules. The latest numbers from Redfin find on average rent prices are up about 18 percent over the last two years. Rent control proposals are on the agenda in more than half the states. The price of wheat on the rise. The benchmark U.S. price up more than 70 percent compared to last year. The Russian invasion of Ukraine is threatening supplies. Both countries are major wheat exporters. 25-year-old model Haley Bieber recovering from a major health scare. The wife of singer Justin Bieber says she was hospitalized for a blood clot in her brain. After having stroke-like symptoms, she says her body passed the clot on its own without requiring surgery. Thankfully, though, because obviously, Allison, we know just how dangerous something like this can be. Well, it looks like not everyone was happy with their great resignation. About 72% of people who quit their job during the pandemic and started another one, well, they say they regret leaving. That's according to a new survey from The Muse. It found millennial and Gen Z job seekers say they were surprised about new roles in their new jobs that were different from the interview process. And speaking of regretting quitting, seven-time Super Bowl champion Tom Brady says he is going to play in the NFL next season. This is just two months after he announced he was retiring. ABC's Will Gans breaking down what's next for the NFL quarterback. Thought you'd be talking about March Madness this morning? Think again. This is the night everyone is talking about their brackets, talking about the men's tournament, talking about the women's tournament, and Tom Brady just crash-landed into all of that. And he's the headliner. Tom Brady announcing his six-week retirement is over. These past two months, I've realized my place is still on the field and not in the stands. That time will come, but it's not now. I love my teammates and I love my supportive family. They make it all possible. You have to respect him. It's unbelievable what he's done, how healthy he's been, how great he has been for so long. He goes to a new team after the Patriots. And he wins the Super Bowl. The seven-time Super Bowl champion back with the Tampa Bay Bucks. I'm coming back for my 23rd season in Tampa. Unfinished business. He's much more than just a sports star. He is an icon and he's a huge piece of American culture. And that's why this story resonates the way it does. This on the same day as retired QB Tom Brady's deep down the right side. And then she makes the catch. Final touchdown ball. That's more than half a million dollars at auction. Drawing comparisons to Michael Jordan's on retirement back in 1995. Oh, that's great. All right, MJ, number one. We're going to appreciate him even more. He's got something more to prove now. I would say that this is bigger news than Michael Jordan's comeback. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Does anybody else like a collective eye roll when you're like, oh, he's back? I'm just kidding. That's terrible. But maybe because I'm I'm a Kansas City fan, a Cardinals fan, not a Tom Brady fan because, you know, he always wins.
So anyway, we'll get off that tangent. Let's talk about your most accurate forecast here as we start off our Monday. We're looking at clear skies as we look out towards the McDowell's waiting for our sun to come up this morning and our temperatures. They're cool, but not terribly cold out there. Maybe you need the car heater on for just a little bit, but I don't think you'll need it full blast as our temperatures sit in the mid to upper 40s from Scottsdale to Mesa to Glendale. Goodyear checking in at 50 degrees and Phoenix at 54 here this morning. So again, a cool start, not a terribly cold cold start by any means and it's going to be a quick warm up today with plenty of sunshine across the valley and across the state. Our temperatures end up a little higher than yesterday, so that means the warm up puts us into the upper 60s by 10 a.m. mid 70s then by lunchtime. So if you want to get outdoors for any more strenuous outdoor activities, then your best bet might be to go between now and noon. And then we start to climb into the upper 70s by 2 o'clock. We'll reach the 80s at around 3 and then our high peaks at 82. I do think we stay in the 80s through about 5 p.m. back down into the 70s after that, keeping those clear skies around as we go into tonight too. Compared to normal, we're actually topping out about four degrees above the average high for this time of year, and that average has climbed. It actually has climbed pretty quickly this month, uh, more so than other months, and now our 30 year average is at 78. But again, we'll still still end up a couple degrees above that today. If you are going to be outdoors, air quality in the moderate range, we're introducing ozone into the mix now. Particle pollution spikes in the morning and in the evening hours in the middle of the afternoon we see that ozone pollution climb but staying in the moderate range overall burn time at about 30 minutes with our uv index at a six and pollen counts those aren't dropping anytime soon they're staying in the high range mulberry ash and juniper all week long that will be an issue for us across arizona look for a high of 83 today at lake havasu 65 in prescott mid 50s in heber and 52 for a high today in flagstaff one disturbance clearing out to the east what we've got setting up to our west is high pressure and that ridge of high pressure is what's going to bring warmer weather our way with temperatures trending up even further tomorrow for Phoenix. That means a high of 87 on Tuesday for Flagstaff. That means temperatures climb into the 60s. We'll stay warm into Wednesday, more winds on Wednesday and even a chance for showers up north. But then going into the weekend, look at that change from Saturday to Sunday, 80 Saturday, 70s on Sunday, even a chance for showers across the state as our next storm moves through. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Okay, so we have a couple of new incidents to tell you about at this hour, mostly focused on the northern portion of the valley. So first, we are looking at the 17. On the I-10, there's that typical slowdown. You'll go to about 23 miles an hour, right around 57th Avenue. Then on the 17 this morning, southbound traffic starting to slow down the closer that you get to the stack this morning. But we do have a stalled vehicle on the near Greenway Road, I should say. That's off to the right, so give them a little extra time. The bigger issues are happening. There is a crash at the entry ramp from the 101 to the 17 southbound. That's not really causing a slowdown, but this other crash right next to that on the loop 101 eastbound at 35th Avenue, you can see that's already causing a slowdown. Traffic is down to 23 miles an hour. Our live view from our ADOT camera shows that we do have first responders on scene. You can't really see the car. It's up at the front here, um, so it's hard to tell exactly what's happening. It is mostly off to the side, but there is one lane that is blocked, so traffic is getting around all be it slowly. As for those drive times, now going to take you a half hour on the 10 to come in from the far west valley. Going south on the 17 still looks okay. It's about a 15 minute ride, but the 51 would be safer. And going across the 101 between the 17 and the 51, that's unaffected. That's still about a 10 minute drive, Nick. Well, so to come at 624, the Chicago River already been dyed green and now you get a taste of the Windy City right here in the valley. Rates are going up this week at 636. If you use Uber or Uber Eats, expect to pay more for the next couple of months. And we're 181 days until the Arizona Cardinals begin the new football season at 644. One of the team's biggest players and a great addition, might I say, deciding to stay <laughs> in the desert. Okay, this is when it pays to wake up early. Take a live look at this. The sun, not up just yet, but boy, does it look pretty. This is a look for you in Tempe. The 80s, they are back in a big way. And at 649, we're already looking toward next weekend in your super seven-day forecast. Stick around.
on your bulletin board this morning. Get ready to celebrate all things Chicago. Chicago West Fest coming to Mesa Convention Center on Saturday. So you're going to be able to enjoy your favorite Chicago dishes and treats from local food vendors like Mr. Munchies and Richie V's Chicago Dogs. There will also be a beer garden, a car show, and a whole kid zone too with fun activities like face painting and a bounce house. So if you're feeling competitive, maybe sign up for the hot dog eating contest or cornhole tournament <laughs> and don't miss the live performances too. They'll have a tribute band to Ario Speedwagon, Tom Petty, and of course the band Chicago. And by the way, tickets, they're only 12 bucks. So show your love for the Windy City. That is today's bulletin board. You're our favorite Chicago import, Allison. I will say that, though. OK, so you might want to dust off that old boom box, maybe the disc man, because it looks like CDs are actually making a comeback. The Recording Industry Association of America releasing its annual sales report showing CD sales are seeing year over year growth for the first time since 2004. Sales for vinyl records have also been growing. The combination of the two shows overall physical music sales are up for the first time since 1996. Your first CD? Come on over Shania Twain oh, in like 1998. How about you? That's a good one. My a good first one. one was Selena. I, her Como La Flor one. Yeah. I'm a bitty bitty bum bum. Boo, boo, there you yes. go. All right, guys, much more news ahead for you coming up at 630. It's a day for everyone who loves math. March 14th or 314 pie day. Yes, it means lots of deals on all different kinds of pies, too. Love you. Any Love you, Arizona. Anymore? Your community here is so generous, so amazing. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, the tenors are amazing. The stars shining bright in the valley this weekend. We're bringing you on the purple carpet for Celebrity Fight Night and introducing you to their new mission. So you go to your doctor's appointment and they offer to take your blood right there in the office. Should you do it? I'm Investigator Joe Ducey with the one insurance question you should ask first. All right, Joe, always taking care of us. Let's talk about those temperatures because they are trending up this week with highs in the low 80s today, not far from 90 tomorrow and still pretty warm on Wednesday, but we've got a couple storms to track too and they could bring changes in time for the weekend. Your Super 7 Day is still ahead.